Scrap Kings. Southwest England, Dorset, the hamlet of North Wooden. And a small local forge with a global reputation. Blacksmith Chris Hannam and Slovakian artist Martin Galbavi shot to fame when they created a six metre tall scrap soldier. They've now been commissioned to recreate a smaller version of their Tin Tommy in order to honour a British hero. The new commission is to commemorate a soldier uh, the name of Norman Harvey. Martin has been hard at it and the supporting framework is complete but now it's time to bring the sculpture to life. In good shape, good outline. Yeah. So now we need the scrap. Yeah. Tools. Yes, the starting complete tools. OK. Yeah. So today is a big day for us, then. They're victims of their own success. Well, there is great expectation from us because obviously uh, the larger soldier uh, was in the media so much and so many people have seen it and raved about it. So the people that have ordered this one obviously are expecting a, a wow factor. Celebrating a war veteran, there's one scrap part Martin is keen to get right. Any more thoughts about perhaps this, this heart? Because that's... Oh. Yes, yeah, see, see, car pump. Car yeah, pump yeah, is pump. very important. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, my, my, my plan, like, maybe see very nice pump, very nice heart. So every soldier needs a heart. Yeah. And there can be only one type of pump for this British hero. No Japanese car, um, England, England car, pump. <laughs> oh, we might, we, might, we might struggle there to find an English yeah. car, but we'll have a look. With a list of ingredients, Oh. It's off to the shops. Super. Okay, man. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And we'll go, sh go shopping. For Martin and Chris, the yard is like a box of chocolates. Ah, like a berry. Okay. okay. Yeah, I guess small stuff for the soldier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah small. Yeah. And with mountains of scrap to rummage through, there's plenty of choice. Wheel wrench? Mm, yes. How about that? Me? Or no? Yeah, maybe. Oh, shoulder, OK. OK. Yeah. yeah. For Martin, the British scrapyard is the place to be. England, very nice scrap metal, very old, very old. I'm Slovakia, very modern scrap metal. England, very old. Number yeah. one shop? Number one shop. <laughs> <laughs> Super. Rusting tools. Super. Chains and spanners. Yeah. Super. And bolt cutters. Super. All have potential to form legs or arms, hairs or fingers. Very nice. OK, this is my models. Okay. Super. <laughs> the shopping basket is filling up. Oh, Chris is... Sorry, Chris. Big kilos. <laughs> But Martin's perfect heart eludes him. Oh, stop, 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 stop. What? Super. Oh. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe heart. Brilliant. Super. So maybe, yeah, good plan. Maybe take aluminium go and yeah. maybe stay. Yeah, maybe go. Maybe, maybe go. go. Maybe go. Yeah, aluminium yeah, complete, yeah. complete pump. Yeah? Super. Brilliant. With the final part of the puzzle located. That's oh, all right. Oh, okay, super. The lads head home. Back in Dorset, Slovakian metal artist Martin Galbavi has been firing on all cylinders in order to complete his scrap soldier sculpture. He's under pressure, as in just a few weeks, the fruits of his labor will be unveiled to the soldier's family. Despite the time constraints, Martin is pleased with progress. Very happy, very happy, very old materials, absolute perfect design. Yeah, very nice, very nice details. But will his colleague Chris Hannam agree? Ah. Very good progress. Yeah, yeah. Grand grandfather spanners, Chris. Scrapyard spanner. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah. Uh, the bolt cuppers from the scrapyard as well, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice, very nice details. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah complete, complete, 
Yeah, yeah. Be... good shape. Yeah, good shape. But there's still plenty to do. So, Martin, legs may be finished soon. Then we need body. Mm -hmm. That's quite a lot of work. We've got uh, two weeks Every plus day. head. Plus head, Plus yeah. spray, plus delivery. Yes. <laughs> work, work, work. Work, work, work. OK. One part of the sculpture they're keen to get right is the head. He's looking quite scary <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> Maybe one horror film. <laughs> yeah. The heat is on and there's no let up. Martin must weld, grind and polish the mass of metal into the recognisable face of Norman Harvey. It is important to get the likeness right of uh, Norman Harvey, but obviously using the materials we're using, scrap, etc., etc., it's not the easiest thing to do. On the 25th of October 1918, Norman Harvey's battalion was pinned down by machine gun fire. The casualties were rising. Single-handedly, he engaged the enemy, killing 20 and capturing two. All on his own, he repelled another enemy offensive and carried out a solo reconnaissance mission, gaining valuable intelligence for the Allies. He survived the First World War and was awarded the Victoria Cross, aged 19. At the forge, Norman's legacy has been brought back to life. Wow, look at wow, that. Wow, see. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. He's a real person. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe a little smile. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, the hat and head fit. That is brilliant, yeah? Yes, super. Perfect position, perfect mm -hmm. head. Mm -hmm. Gonna be very happy. <laughs> Excellent, man, really nice. With one challenge complete, there are still more to come, and D-Day is rapidly approaching. Martin's more or less finished from the waist down. The legs are complete. We've got to go from here upwards, which is still a lot of work. There's a lot of work to be done to the chest, bags, all the tools have to fill in in the chest. So there's an awful lot of work to do. Martin's under a little bit of pressure, shall we say, but I'm sure he'll um, pull it in. Dorset, North Watton. For the past eight weeks, Slovakian sculptor Martin Galbovi has been bending, welding and grinding old metal to create a scrap statue of Victoria Cross winner Norman Harvey. Super. Now complete, the team must ensure the soldier gets to his first public appearance over 230 miles away in Wigan. But right now, they have to negotiate the three-metre journey out of the workshop. OK, so we're very, very tight, Martin. Maybe one centimetre maximum. A little up, one, yes. OK, stop, stop, stop. It's super tight. OK. No, 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 please. Uh, little... Yes. OK. Yeah, and, and down. down. Yeah. OK, oh, stop. I don't mind, mind your fingers, man. But at last, the statue is free. Oh, super. <laughs> super. Maybe three millimetres. <laughs> and for the first time, the team can see Private Norman Harvey in all his glory. That was very close. Wow. That is truly amazing. Good. Very good, Martin. Put it Thank there. Thank you. Private Norman Harvey would be very proud. Same. Very yeah. proud. It's a very emotional moment, especially we know the uh, background now to Norman Harvey. Um, yeah, and get him out here in the daylight, he, he, he almost comes to life again, shall we say, yeah. But there's no time to admire Martin's super handiwork. Super. Let's go. The statue must be locked and loaded onto the trailer. OK, have we, got, have we come back with him yes, a little yes, bit? Yeah. Weighing in at almost 200 kilograms, the sculpture is bolted down to a supporting frame. Then carefully lifted onto the trailer. OK. Super. Once lashed down, Norman's ready to make the 230-mile trip north to Wigan to meet his family. 
Okay, Martin. Let's go. Okay, super. But winding country roads don't make it easy to transport a two meter high steel soldier. Very bumpy roads in Dorset. We'll be okay once we get out of Dorset and we get on some good roads. Okay, like maybe stopping the ice cream. Yeah, stopping oh. ice cream. Absolutely. So, with the prospect of a Mr. Whippy driving them forward, Chris and Martin head north to deliver their fusilier. And four weeks later, near Wigan, Norman Harvey is safely installed in his new permanent residence, awaiting the homecoming he never had. It's a big turnout. Everyone keen to get a glimpse of the metal marvel. Among the crowd, Norman's family, including nephew John. I was only very, very tiny when he died, so then my mother told me about him. I think he was so, so, so much of a giving chap. Killed during the Second World War and buried overseas, Norman Harvey's family have not seen him in over 70 years. It's a time for reflection. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. And as the Union Jack is pulled away, Norman Harvey VC is once again returned to the lands he fought so hard to protect. And for nephew John, Martin and Chris's creation is a fitting tribute. I think that's absolutely fantastic. It's so tactile you want to go and touch it. If my mother could see this now, she'd be so proud, you wouldn't believe. And I think he would himself, to be quite honest with you. He was so humble in a way. And they, these guys were, they, they didn't bother about, uh, you know, they just did it and, and got on with things and, and that was it.